All right, folks, so in today's video, what we're gonna do is we are going to test signal rejection uh, of this Baofeng UV5R. We're gonna compare that to a Yaesu FT70D. Now you may ask, why are we comparing it to a 70D? Because it's a radio that I had sitting right here and it's a popular radio and it's one that is often recommended to beginners and experienced hams alike. To inject the signal, we're gonna use this tiny SA Ultra. And uh, what we're gonna do is check the spacing and how far apart from that signal we can get without any interference on these radios. So here in North America, we space our repeaters and our simplex channels either 15 kilohertz or 20 kilohertz apart from each other. Now it varies depending upon state and your local repeater coordinator and I believe your state frequency coordinator. So you might wanna look that up to find out what it is in your state. For this test, we're going to do 15 kilohertz of separation. That's going to be our measurement or our cutoff for success. Now, from the tiny SA, we're going to inject an S9 signal, which is negative 93 dB. And uh, we're going to inject that into our bow fangs. And uh, we're going to test and see what happens. All right, let's get started. Let's set up our Baofeng UV5R for the test. So what we have is, is we're on a frequency of 146.520. You wanna make sure that you have dual watch or dual monitor off. That's a setting where you can monitor both frequencies. The reason being is, is that we have our squelch set to zero, which is wide open, which means that we could pick up a signal uh, and then switch uh, VFOs. And we don't wanna do that. We wanna stay on a singular one. So we wanna leave our squelch at zero. And what I have over here is my tiny SA. We're going to configure that in one second. Uh, we're coming out of the output of the tiny SA, and we have the tiny SA set up in signal generator mode. Let me just go ahead and attach that. Now we are taking a look at our signal generator, and the lights are going to dim so we can actually read what's going on here. So you can see I'm already set up for frequency of 146.52. And right now the level is negative 18.1 dBm, which is a default. So I don't wanna do that yet, but I can. I accidentally clicked on mod for modulation and I wanna go ahead and I wanna switch this to FM. We're gonna do with a one kilohertz or thousand hertz tone and we are going to do an FM deviation of three kilohertz. Let me go back and then let's set our level. Now, when we set our level, we want to make sure that we put this negative sign in here. Uh, if we don't, we could have some pandemonium. And when I do that, I get a negative sign down here. And we're going to go negative 93 dBm. So I do times one. And there we go. If I injected a plus 93 dBm signal into the front end of this uh, UV5R, I would have problems. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on. And then we should start to hear a signal come out of here. Let me turn this up a little bit and you can hear the signal. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust my frequency and see how far away we need to go to stop hearing this. Our Baofeng is set up for five kilohertz steps, which is a common setting in North America. So at 525, we can still hear it. And at 530, we don't. We hear something, but I don't think it's that noise. Now when I go to 535, I can hear it again. And at 540, I don't. 545, I don't. So that's at least 15K away from 520, which is probably a little bit more than what we want. Let's go the other direction. Oops. All right, so here's our original signal. So let's go down five. You can still hear it go down 10. Now we're starting to get to the point where we shouldn't be hearing this any longer. 505, we can still hear it. And at 500, we don't. So where this becomes a problem is at 520, uh, our signal is actually going to bleed over. Let's go back to 520 and see if we can fix this with a squelch setting. So if I go into my squelch, oops, that's step. I don't want that. So let me go ahead and let's just go ahead and set this to three, which is where I typically leave my squelch setting. I'm gonna exit out of here. Now we'll go down to 15, can still hear it, which is expected. 10, I can still hear it. And now I can't hear it at five. Going up, I can hear it at 25. 
I can't really hear it at 30. And I definitely can't hear it at 35. Let's test the FT70D. Okay, here's our FT70D. Let's just go ahead and check our squelch setting real quick. My squelch is set to two. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn this down to zero. So we start with a level playing field. And there's a the signal we can hear just fine. Let's go up. I can kind of hear it at 35. I don't hear it at 40. So with the squelch open, this is very similar to the Baofeng. Very similar indeed. So let's go up and set our squelch. Now we're going to set it to three. Now I get that the scale for the Baofeng and for the Yesu are likely different in terms of squelch. So let's go ahead and set the squelch. We'll set it to three. All right, now let's go up. And have full quieting on 35. And full quieting on 15. So in this test, what I'm not trying to do is say that one radio is better than another and recommend one radio over another. What I'm attempting to do is show uh, similarities and differences between the two radios. And as a consumer, you need to make the choices that you want to make depending upon which radio you buy and which radio that you use. I just want to show some objective testing. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond.